If you have ever stood inside a reconstructed Viking longhouse during winter, you may have noticed something unsettling. There are no chimneys in the modern sense. Doors are low and wide. Walls are made of turf, wood, and earth. By every modern building standard, these structures should have been freezing wind tunnels. Yet archaeological evidence, soot layering, animal habitation patterns, and historical accounts all agree on one thing. Viking longhouses remained livable through some of the harshest winters in Europe. This was not luck. It was the result of an intentional ice draft barrier system that controlled cold air long before insulation was a scientific discipline. What follows is not myth or romanticism, but a practical breakdown of how this system worked and why it still matters today. Cold air was treated as a physical substance that could be trapped, slowed, and exhausted. The longhouse hearth was never placed randomly. It sat along the central axis of the structure, directly beneath a smoke opening in the roof. As the fire burned, warm air rose vertically and exited through the vent. This upward movement created a gentle pull that drew colder air along the floor toward the fire. Instead of cold draughts roaming freely, they were guided into a predictable path where they could be reheated. This created a stable convection loop that continuously recycled interior air. The effect was subtle but constant. The longhouse never felt stagnant, yet it was protected from sudden gusts. Modern homes unknowingly recreate this effect with poorly sealed fireplaces, but the Viking system was intentional and balanced. In practical application today, placing heat sources centrally and allowing controlled exhaust points can, you know, dramatically reduce uneven cold zones inside a structure. Beds in Viking longhouses were raised off the floor, often built into wall benches. This kept sleepers above the coldest air layer, which naturally hugged the ground. Animals were housed inside the longhouse not only for protection, but because their body heat added to the thermal mass of the building. More importantly, animals occupied the coldest zones near entrances and outer walls, acting as living buffers between humans and drafts. This arrangement shows an understanding of vertical temperature stratification. Even today, sleeping closer to the ground in winter leads to heat loss. Elevating sleeping areas, insulating floors, and using thermal mass strategically are lessons directly inherited from this system. The steeply pitched roofs of longhouses were not only for snow shedding. They also allowed warm air to rise without stagnation. As heat escaped slowly through the roof opening, it prevented ice build-up and condensation that could lead to sudden cold drops. The roof materials, often layered with thatch and birch bark, absorbed moisture while maintaining airflow resistance. This prevented what modern builders call cold bridging. Instead of cold transferring rapidly through solid materials, it dissipated gradually. Applying this today means paying attention to roof ventilation, moisture control, and layered construction rather than relying solely on sealed membranes. One of the most overlooked aspects of this system is flexibility. Walls could be thickened with additional turf in winter. Door coverings could be added or removed. Fire intensity could be adjusted to alter airflow. The system responded to weather, not the other way around. This adaptability is something modern buildings often lack. For those interested in applying this knowledge practically, start by identifying where cold air enters and settles in your space. 
Lower drafts should be trapped, not fought. Heat sources should guide air movement, not overpower it. Materials should slow airflow rather than attempt to seal it completely. These are Viking principles that remain relevant in off-grid living, emergency shelters and energy-efficient homes. This forgotten system explains why longhouses endured for centuries. The Viking longhouse was not primitive. It was precise. Its ice draft barrier system was the result of generations of observation, failure and refinement. It allowed families to survive winters that modern infrastructure still struggles against. Understanding this system is not about nostalgia. It is about reclaiming knowledge that worked because it respected physics, climate and human needs. If this deep dive into Viking thermal engineering added value to your understanding of history and survival design, subscribe to the channel, share this video with others who care about real historical knowledge, and help keep these forgotten systems alive for future generations.